And Doc Green is not the only one that has been waiting for this day, waiting for this moment. OCW The Clash 2020 Season 15. We are ready for the longest running pay-per-view in OCW history. It is The Clash and two men that have been waiting for it more than anyone. Doc Green, Antonio Everett, shortly followed by myself and my broadcast partner, Big Yank and Angus for the first half of The Clash 2020. Now, it's good to be back, and it may be an ignominious match to return to regular commentary on with two former friends, two former brothers who now have nothing but hatred left in their hearts for each other. And I don't know what frightens me more, this mask that Doc Green is, is bearing on his face or the word ignominious. Uh, be that as it may, we do have Doc Green out first. Mr. Sensation was very clear. He wants nothing to do with this. He's getting it out of the way early and letting these two rip each other apart before we get the pay-per-view started proper. It seems like it's something that needs to happen with all of Doc Green and Antonio Everett's actions these past few weeks after the disgusting betrayal. As we saw after that loss to CQC, Doc Green just snapped. He decided he wanted to start him for himself. He thought Everett was holding him back. He wanted to take everything he deserved, and he was going to exact that revenge upon Everett for holding him back. And as the former World Heavyweight Champion awaits Antonio Everett, I would like to welcome you once again to Milan, Italy for the Clash. We've got Doc and Antonio. So what we saying, what? Little special treat for them. Can I bring my brother on stage? Yes, sir. Yo, yo, yo. And there is the Tarantula Antonio Everett, accompanied by grime rappers, grime stars from West London, Dave and AJ Tracy. Antonio Everett out here to face his once former best friend, of course, repping the gold and purple in honor of Kobe and Gigi Bryant. Rest in peace to them. And he's looking to get his hands on Doc Green once and for all since the 15th anniversary show Betrayal Angus. Absolutely. And I think there's a lot of meaning in this entrance. Not only is he flanked by two people who are very close to the music industry, two rising stars. You know, the, the colors on his outfit, everything about this entrance is talking about brotherhood, is talking about support, is talking about trust, you know? And everything in, in Doc Green's entrance is talking about the two sides of his personality, the, the side he abandoned when he turned on Antonio Everett. You can see the, the contrast in what these two men have become just as they come to the ring. And the time for symbolism is nearly over as the opening match of the Clash 2020 is going to be Antonio and Doc in an unsanctioned match, Angus. No countouts, no disqualifications. And it's got to be said, the only man for the job for this type of match, for this type of contest. We're not getting Ted for this one. We are getting the man himself, senior official Akita. I should say hopefully no lawsuits and hopefully no ended careers here. But with the hate these two men have for each other, you never know. And oh, we're getting an early German suplex and a, a bridge pin attempt. And you would think that these two would want to kill each other and, and not go for such early pins. Well, that may be, but at the same time, maybe Everett is holding back that little hope that, that Doc can come to his senses. He wants to end this match. He wants to prove he's the better man and prove that he doesn't get to live in the shadow of Doc Green and the Doc's wrong about all he's saying, but maybe he doesn't want to end his career and doesn't want to cause a serious injury because I know for sure Doc Green don't care about none of that. He has no qualms about ending Antonio Everett's career tonight. And like it's the 40s, we've got a lot of Germans here in Italy. <laughs> Antonio Everett ripping uh, deadlift suplexes oh, no. all over Doc Green. And that comment was unsanctioned, Angus. Yeah, we're not going to get sued for that, right? <laughs> I good, think all bets are off. It's a good thing the live crowd can't hear us. We'd have a bunch of pizzas being thrown. 
I don't even think Sensation's here yet, so I think I'm in the clear. We're going to finally take this battle, this brawl to the outside as Doc Green takes his first advantage in this contest. AB messed up big with that dropkick at the beginning. You know, he tends to like to use those running attacks to catch people off guard with his quickness and agility, but these two men know each other, perhaps better than anyone in this company knows each other, maybe even better than H2O and Bobby Minio know each other. I would argue that that is the case. We saw these two tear the house down at Ambition when it returned last season. These two men just rookies at that point. Uh, no longer rookies, now former champions, former best friends, big time competitors in OCW. A lot has changed here now and then, but I think the one thing that won't change is we're going to see a highly contested match, but it's not going to be about proving to OCW they deserve to compete. It's not going to be about gentlemanly competition. It's just going to be about pain and blood and war here in this ring. And we are only a couple minutes in now, but the springboard attempt there from Doc after Antonio himself missed a, a running Meteora on the outside. Now we're going to get an uh, Air Raid Siren type maneuver. Oh, but he cuts it off on the back of Doc's neck. Innovation and, and yet again, more of that passivicity. It may, it's maybe holding something back like you said earlier, Angus. Perhaps. Although I think passive is the wrong word. Seems Everett's taking advantage of this encounter. He's currently got Doc Green's number. Of course, that could change any time. Not sure what he's oh, doing he, getting into the ring there. It might be changing right now as he's going to get his bell rung here on the mat. All it takes is one good hit to the head and that can end your night. And of course, Antonio Everett has been building a relationship with Terra Deturis, and that is one of the more passive people we have in the OCW locker room. Maybe that has something to do with it. Doc Green, though, no friends, all enemies. Uh, he's all business right now as he takes his former friend to the outside. Yeah, as unfortunate as to say, I think both their philosophies can be correct as far as coming to success in the ring. You can use your anger, use your hatred, use it to drive you. Be like Rex, you know, be like B-17. Or you can try to maintain a peace of mind and, and keep that emotional balance as you wrestle a match to wrestle and to win, not to hurt people. Like some legends like Drago Caesar. You know, both approaches can win. <laughs> and right out here in front of us, a comment about... Uh... A man way too familiar with Milan and Trago Caesar. We hope to see him a little bit later tonight. Full frontal facer very early for one of Doc's signature maneuvers. And here come the weapons. Right on the floor, too. As we know, the hardest part of the um, the Earth's crust is the floor outside of a wrestling ring. <laughs> and oh my god, the hardest part of that Asian beat stick just met the center, the ribs of Doc Green. And oh, a little receipt for Antonio Everett. I don't think that's the politically correct name for a kendo stick, Jake. I was, I'm paid to call it that by my <laughs> boss and your boss, Jason Clinton Sensation. We get paid? Well, I do. Uh. And back to the action. We got Doc Green here on the outside after using that kendo stick here right out in front of our announce table. Uh, we've got a lot of action ahead of you, Angus. Uh, you and I got the first four matches of the day. Uh, OCW, of course, in uh, bright daylight here in Milan. But we're getting the unsanctioned action out of the way. Starting off hot with a nice uh, hardcore battle, a brawl. And uh, Antonio Everett wasting no time getting right back on top. Oh, after he lost the encounter outside. A bright light from that blue sky shines down on one of the darkest stories in OCW. These two men who once loved each other now devolved into hate. You know, it's it's not about the money. There's a winner's purse, but it's not about the money. Whatever hand holds that winner's purse is going to be a guilty one after what they did to their former friend. And we're hoping that our usual official, Ted, is not uh, jacking some poor woman's purse backstage right now. A lot of these OCW staff members not familiar with the uh, streets of Italy um, right now, it's all about Antonio and Doc, who are very familiar with one another, as you mentioned. And Doc, once again, unbuckling the, the top turnbuckle. Akita seemed to have prepared it before, but not this that time. That is one so. question. It is unsanctioned. He doesn't have to do that. Maybe he does have the fighter's messengers in mind. Or maybe he just wants them to die, you know, with each other's fists, not with objects. Die safely, the, the creed of Mugen. And Akita seems to be holding it uh, close to the chest. He's leaving it unbuckled for now, though, as these two men going right back to the outside. Akita is just going oh! to count the pin or get the tap out submission. And look out, it might be your most favorite knee here on the outside, Antonio, sparing no expense. That was an insane sequence of agility. I mean, even after a good few minutes of match, there was not only a dodge roll, but he leapt straight over his head. You know, you can see the amount of athleticism in these two men. Some brilliant counters there from both Doc and Antonio. 
Of course, it's not the first time they've impressed with their athleticism, and it cer certainly won't be the last. So, well, it actually, could be. I, I don't want to speak too soon. Yeah, and I hope not. But the way it's going, I mean, when there's when there's something like this going on between, <laughs> see look what I mean? You know, there's so much passion, there's so much fire, there's so much hatred in this match. As good as it is to watch, I'm not sure I want to. And now Antonio with bad intentions. Look out! A spear through the <laughs> barricade! And we're going to have to pay to get that replaced. We've still got seven matches on the card. Very, very nearly hitting that poor woman in the audience. That could have been bad. And we are about to attendee things to 11 as Antonio Everett tearing apart our very expensive uh, booth here. The See, broadcast table. It's, it's now susceptible. Oh, and now... And the non-existent Spanish announced team table getting torn apart. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we talk about what's changed in Doc Green. You know, how, how he's gotten arrogant, egotistical, and, and frankly quite mean in his attacks. But it's changed Everett, too. You know, he never would have thought of disassembling the tables or going through a spear through the barricade before all this happened. It's changed both men for the better or for the worse. And right now it seems to be for the worst. Uh, Antonio didn't nail your ma and my ma's favorite knee on the outside. We're going to get another full frontal facer here on the inside. One of Doc Green's special favorite maneuvers. And now calling over Akita for the pen attempt. Is this all? No, Antonio kicks out of two. Two and a half there, but it's going to take more to quench the fire in Antonio's spirit after Doc did his best to... To knock it out with so many attacks after matches and sneaked around backstage and all that very disgusting, very undock green like conduct. Not the man I once knew. He may be somebody that you used to know, <laughs> and he's about. <laughs> he's gonna get you. <laughs> he's about to be cut off right now, but. Right, again, these quick, agile maneuvers from both men, and Doc Green showing the agility that made him a rookie world champion with a Hurricane Rana inside the ring. He's going back for that, uh, that kendo stick. He can't get in the ring for some reason. There's there's an invisible wall of force from the spirit of Antonio Everett driving his former friend away. Looks like Doc Green may have learned a thing or two from veteran KD Angelo. Not able to navigate the apron. And now both of these men right back inside the ring. And oh, Antonio getting the better of Doc once again with the Asian beat stick. Doc wanted that weapon for an advantage, but he took too much time. And that was a trade-off that did not pay off in this case. Oh my goodness, and still going to town with the kendo him. stick. You can just this see. Is, this is the, it's the type of brutality we expect at Angus. Exactly. I mean, it's a fantastic match so far, and at the same time, it's a terrible sight to see. I don't know who's going to come out on top. And you just think about the, the different feelings that I had watching their match at Ambition with uh, Jason Clinton Sensation, and now what, what I'm seeing here, the different feelings, the, the emotions these two have as we get another big Hurricane Rana taking down Antonio Everett. It's quite the contrast, because you see all the athleticism, all the wrestling skills, just so much more violence, so much more intensity. This is unsanctioned. Anything can and will happen. And who knows how long this is going to go as it is unsanctioned. It's also untimed. Uh, Fred, our usual timekeeper over here, not not anywhere to be found. He's waiting for the first bout of the night, which we'll see a little bit later between Valkyrie and Heather Angelo. But before we can get there, we got to watch two blokes beat each other to death. Oh, no. Once again, I should I oh. should note the tactics of Doc Green here. There's a, there's, a, there's a mentality behind the brutality. Just like with the kendo stick, with the cherry, he's been targeting... Uh, Antonio's formerly injured leg. It might still be injured, and it very well could be now. Yeah, a, a bone bruise on that knee for Antonio Everett. Looks like it was a little lower, trying to take one of the wheels off of the tarantula, take one of those weapons away. You know he loves to use the kicks, and my God, back to the steel chair, and again ringing his bell, and I think I'm seeing some color from Antonio. He's definitely busted open. He could be in trouble right now. Doc Green has him stunned. He has him dazed. He has him right where he wants him, but Antonio's still fighting back. And on pure instinct, Antonio, with his eyes covered in blood, he finds your mom's favorite knee, and so does Doc to cover. Akita, no, just a one count. Hand near the ropes, but no rope breaks in this matchup. Nowhere in the ring can save you. The only thing it isn't is falls count anywhere, so it does have to happen in the ring. I think that's it. Unbelievable performance from both men. And now Antonio taking a rest, looking at his friend eye to eye, both men on their rear ends. Taking a moment to really ask him, am I the one holding you back? You know, was I the weak link in the uncrowned or was your ego the weak link? 
That's been the narrative all along. Doc Green, when he gave us the explanation, it was all of those failed uh, wins, the three losses to CQC, the failure to secure the tag team glory that they so Doc Green seems like he's children. running away. Either running away or mind games, and oh my goodness, Antonio put the chair up to defend himself, and it was not the best of decisions as he got it right in the face with that drop kick. The move oh to beat Draco Caesar. Spider special. We're going to see that scumbag a little later, but we're seeing one of his maneuvers now in the unsanctioned contest. Doc Green knew him too well. Oh, Once again, a prediction. Slam on the chair. Oof. Looks like his hip lined on that kendo stick as well, adding some extra impact. And it could be all over, but for crying. I don't know what kind of system they have. Oh my god, look at this! A lumbar check! On the much larger Antonio Everett, Doc Green, bringing out all of the offensive firepower. Here's the cover. No, Antonio kicks out at one. Both eye men. for an eye here in Italy. Both men kicking out at one. You can see each man wants to prove they're the best. They have so much to lose in this contest, even though it might not even be recorded as an official win or a loss, but it means almost more than a world title match, these two men right now. This is no pre-show, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Clash 2020, and what you're watching is a brutal affair, an unsanctioned contest between Doc and Antonio. Not for the faint of heart, and I don't know what kind of system they have here, but it, it looks like Doc Green wants to become the judge, jury, and executioner. Back and forth they go, Angus. Antonio Everett's going to fight him every step Woo! of the way. Somehow still managing to jump, even with the injured leg. And how are they managing to do it? And finally, after a slew of counters from both members of the former Uncrowned, Antonio able to get a leg up on his former tag team partner, pun absolutely intended. Yeah, that's why Doc Green, I mean, chaired his leg out of his leg, but the DD best he could, and it still didn't get Everett down. And a power bomb Oof. on the outside of the ring. Oh, and he's not done yet, spinning it right into the apron, my God. Talk about the size and strength advantage. This came into play right there. I'm sure both men are tiring out, but they both have incredible cardio and conditioning. There hasn't really been a spot where both men are resting in this match yet. It's just been furious the whole time. Oh, right into the corner of our announce table here. And if there's a couple of things I love in my big beefy men, it's size and strength. <laughs> and if there's anything I love, to go to it'd be to see this match end before someone gets even hurt, even worse. Even sentences, Look I can't out. do them. The Tarantula 450 showing off more of that unbelievable athleticism. Nobody home, though. Once again, these men know each other. So, no. Oh, Here my God. Comes. Jumping tombstone pile driver what? trying to break the neck of Doc Green. What? Is that it? Was that on the stick? I didn't see. It may have been an Antonio not able to pick up the three count and not happy with Akita. If that isn't enough, I don't know what it's going to take. Is there going to be tables? Is there going to be a ladder? Is Akira going to have to uh, call the match? I don't know what he's got in mind now. And, oh, an ankle lock! He's oh. going for the ankle! Oh, There hasn't been as much damage to Doc Green's leg, but this very well could end at this point in the match. He's, he can't get to the ropes. He's been and look pulled at the back size. away. Look at the size of Antonio Doc. Oh, able to use his own size, though. He's closer to that ground. They always say... The man closer to the ground wins. We'll see if once that's again missed dropkick. It's getting very, no, very intense. Trying to take it back outside, perhaps. Oh, and don't look now. What has he got? Whoa! I think that table is still set out there. Yes, it is. And Antonio had really bad intentions for that one. Coming very, very close, but instead he eats a face full of mat on the outside of the ring. This dark green prepares to take advantage. I think I know what's coming, Angus. Judge, jury, executioner right to the face. The already bloodied, mangled cheek of Antonio Everett. And now he needs to get him back in the ring. This could be the thing that seals the match if he can get him back in there or maybe he just wants to cause more punishment. That's a big old somehow, bloke he's dragging around. Somehow Everett's still having the presence of mind to chuck Doc in instead and take the advantage. Oh my goodness, a nice Inzaguri and with no shoes. That's right on the sole of the the the, uh, the side of the ankle there to the temple. Brutal maneuver, and just so is this. It's your Ma's favorite knee. That's a move that's put away many a competitor here in OCW. But looks and like, Antonio's not done. Looks like he think it might not be enough. Second time's the charm, my God. Akita, the cover, two. 
And just like ambition, Antonio will walk away victorious. Looks like he's finally closed this ugly chapter in his career. This ugly battle of brother against brother is finally over. Everett has proven everyone to himself and probably most importantly to Doc Green, whether he wants to admit it or not, that he was not the weak link in the Uncrowned, if it could be said there was one. I don't know what's next for the Uncrowned, but I know what's next for us. The Clash officially begins next.